The history of English harbor in Antigua is critical to understanding our past, so much so that its famed naval dockyard was recently honored as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I felt compelled to revisit this small Caribbean nation and to learn more about its story. Join me in the preparation of some local specialties, such as Creole Cooper with Funchi and Lobster Rundown with the famous Black Antiguan Pineapple. From Antigua and English Harbor, all for a taste of history. Wow, spectacular. For millions of years, the turbulent Atlantic Ocean waves have carved Antigua's natural limestone foundation into some of the most dramatic rock formations seen in the Caribbean. The only thing that's more beautiful than this scenery is a great looking dish. And my friends have some specialties up their sleeves. The first dish we prepare incorporates Antigua's national dish called Funchi. I'm so excited to be back in Antigua, working with Arlene, who is a really specialist in preparing funji. Arlene, so good to have you here. Thank you. I know a lot of people play around with funji, put other items into it, but that's not correct, right? No. The correct way is just the way we're doing it now. Right. Let's get started. Okay. What's the first, first step? step? I get a pot. Then we put it on the fire. How many cups of water you put in there? Put three. Three cups, I got you, okay. Then you have the okros. So okra is used a lot in most of the Creole recipes, as you well know. Put it in the pot. We're going to add a little salt. Ten minutes, so we leave in the okra to boil. Okay, I'm going to moist the cornmeal, a little water. I see this is a very fine cornmeal. Is it locally corn? Cornmeal, corn, yes, yeah, local cornmeal. Very fine, I like that, okay. So you never use stock for this, always no, plain water? plain water. And then we add it to the pot. Got you, okay. And the, and the only trick is for the flavor is last moment, once the cornmeal is cooked, is cooked adds a little butter on it. Yeah. You and I both yeah. know butter makes everything, everything. taste better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put it on the side. A chef from Ramon coming out now to do the Creole fish to go with it. Ramon, pleasure chef Walter. Can't wait, can't wait to try <laughs> what you're making over here. You know, we make it easy for you because we did a funchi already that you're going to decorate your... Uh... Yeah, so now it's my turn to do the finishing touch. What we have here is a freshly caught grouper. And I caught for you this morning. Oh, well, thank you for that, Chef. Thanks for that <laughs> reminder as well. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, cut up this uh, beautiful looking grouper. All right, so... What is it, 11, 12 pounder here? This is 11 pound grouper. Beautiful. I cut as close to the head as possible. Grouper happens to be one of my favorite fishes. Why? Because it's firm and it has a distinct different flavor. A lot of people say it's a poor man's red snapper, but I, I happen to disagree with it. Chef, I totally agree with you. This fish is a wonderful piece of fish. You can as simple as a sear it and serve it with some butter. That's all you need, actually. It's a little firm on the flesh. Once this is cooked perfectly, trust yeah. me, you won't be missing the snapper. So we get nice clean cut for presentation. Nice two ounce pieces, because cruel, you don't need it to be big. Again, right here. Well, don't make it too small. Remember, I'm here. I won't make it too small, <laughs> Chef. I mean, this guy was still swimming this morning. You know still that. Swimming so. this morning. <laughs> He's never seen the inside of an icebox. <laughs> <laughs> now we have all our fish entirely filet and ready. Now we're going to season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Lime it down a bit to get some of that fishy flavor. See, because it's so fresh, it doesn't smell like fish. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> smell like fish. <laughs> no. When you put it in the skillet, skin down, skin up? Skin down first to get yeah. a nice crisp on it, and then we turn it over. So gotcha. I'll rest it aside. So the, the, the lemon juice and the salt pepper yes. just penetrates yeah, a little bit. Through it, yeah. Got you. I'm going to prepare my mise en place for my Creole sauce, put it aside to simmer in the time being, and then I'll come back to the fish. I just need, for this, I just need like um, three pegs of garlic, and that's, that's all I need. So I'm going to dice my onions. I want to get some nice medium dice, not too small, not too big. So you keep it in a consistency, later it's still identifiable. Yes, sir. The size is perfect enough to give flavor and easy even to identify it at the end of the cooking. I don't want to smash the garlic a bit so I can cut it easier. 
But you keep it still chunky, it doesn't have I to be Yeah, it doesn't have to be finely chopped, yeah. Move on to my celery. All I need about three quarter ways. Pretty much the same size of the onions. Now I do my peppers. Don't need all of this pepper right here. Just that's good enough. I'm gonna take out that little core right there. Get rid of it. Same size dice as the onions. Yeah, no heat. No heat, but has flavor. Even for this recipe that we are doing, Chef, you need yeah. a little bit of hint of pepper. Yeah. So I have my pepper sauce right I here. See right there. Yeah, now for my seasoned pepper. You just want to roughly slice these. You can always use all the seed. As we said earlier, it's not spicy. No heat. Creole is a tomato-based sauce. Yeah. So the tomato have to be dominant as well. Any tomato, or would you prefer a plum tomato if you had it? Makes uh, a difference. Yeah, plum tomato would be fine. As you can see, this tomato is well ripe, so That's it's perfect, like. yeah, perfect, perfect for this yeah, recipe. Yeah, yeah. Fine, fresh from the garden. All right, so now we are going to put on our Creole sauce. The reason that we do in the Creole sauce is because obviously there's a tremendous influx of Creole food in Antigua. Yeah, it, and that stemmed from um, our ancestors from Africa yeah. and as well a little Spanish infusion. Your celery, onions. You want to add the garlic closer to the end of this sauteing process so the garlic will not get burnt, yeah? I see you got the grandmother spoon. Yeah, I got my great, great, great grandmother spoon. <laughs> Garlics. Let it saute a little bit. Usually you want to let the onion saute a little bit until it becomes translucent. Now, at that point, you know you extract maximum flavor. Peppers, now I go ahead and add in my peppers. All three color. Same let thing. it build a little bit. Yep, you want to stir it all in. Ensure that you get flavors from these peppers as well. I can put the seasoned peppers in here. Easy job today. Look at that. Oh, golly. So much flavor in those. These are fresh tomato. As we said earlier, riper the better. You want to get a little bit of juice as well. Gotcha. Just a little a bit, bit of paste. tomato paste. Add some pre-diced tomato. A little bit of juice as well is needed to aid in the sauce. Now for our tomato juice. Don't need a lot in there. That's perfect. Chef, can you start for me, please? It's beautiful, yeah. So, time. That's like the secret herb. Yep. So just said earlier, just a little yeah, tip of yeah. the pepper sauce. Just to give a little kick to just it. Just to give a little kick. And a few yeah, pimento. Just, just a few pimento, perfect. Sprinkle a little bit of the salt, just to yep. get all the flavors combining in the pot. It looks like a cover of a food magazine yes, already. Yes, chef, beautiful. Let me try a little bit of the, thing, the flavors you got there. Oh, it's gonna... Thank you, give it thank up. you, it's chef. Gonna, it's gonna be good. Just got to cook a little bit more, but not much, not too much actually. Not too much, not too much. So now it, it's been at least 15 minutes since we seasoned the fish, so now we are ready to sear it. We have a nice piece, we should put it in right here. Oh, our kale is looking good. So if you want to be in here, I would have eaten this fish as a ceviche. And it's a uber. It's excellent for that. Excellent for ceviche. Well, I'm gonna actually let it sear probably around five minutes on this side first. You wanna, because of the temperature of this fire, you wanna let it sear till you see a little brown to the base of the edge, and then you know it's time to turn it over. And, and there's a trick for the viewers. If the, the, the albumin, the, the protein comes in little pearls, you kind of know it's, it's ready because you don't want to overcook a fish. You don't want to overcook it either. If you overcook the fish, you might as well buy a can of a tuna. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree with you, yeah. sir. <laughs> That's what I was talking about here. See that? The, egg, that's the, the protein that cooks out on the side, right there? Those are the pearls. Right. So now, can have a fish turn. Look at that beautiful color on this side. This is what we were waiting for, yeah? Look at that. Beautiful skin on the grouper. Yeah. You don't have to cook it more, much more. Need the firmness. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Beautiful. We want to make a switch right now. Yeah. And put the fish in the creole sauce and allow it to simmer. Thank we'll do you, it again, yeah. Yeah, allow this to my about five minutes to let all the Creole flavor incorporated in the fish and you're good to go. All right, so we want to allow the fish to simmer into this Creole sauce for about five minutes. Just so let all the Creole flavor, the, the fish flavor absorb right all the Creole flavor. And then we're going to plate it up with the fungi. So Ramon, Aline already made this for us to help us out. Yeah, so she already gave us a head start. So okay. what I'm going to do right now, mold out this fungi and prepare a nice presentation with the Creole fish. Got you. So traditionally how it's done is a little bit of oil mm -hmm. in whatever mold you want to use. 
If right. there's no oil, it won't come out it of the mold. It won't come out. So yeah. you just put a little bit of oil, grease it all around. Then you want to take the spongy with your wooden spoon. Put it in the mold. Press it. I got to taste it, spongy. Now Go let's sit up. Let me see here. Mm. How is it? Great, Excellent. Eh? I sit up for a while. You can, you can really taste the ochre out of it. You can taste the ochre, right? Mm -hmm. Right here. Ah. Beautiful. Now you can smell all the ingredients that yeah, were previously can. added, right? Beautiful. So, dance a bit, nothing much. What a nice presentation on top of it. Beautiful. This is actually the flavors of Antigua. Let me yeah. see here. How is it? Oh, wow. Thank you, Chef. Oh, no, high you, five. <laughs> high five. Mm. So now you want to taste this with the with the. I will. With the fungi. The reason I want to taste it first by itself is to see how much of the grey will penetrate the fish. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, wonderful. In let, harmony. Let me go ahead and taste it. Go ahead. Wow. Oh. Isn't that beautiful? I see what you're talking about, yeah. Chef. Oh. Magnificent. Wonderful. It's beautiful. This is really a taste of Antigua. Oh. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Over 200 years ago, English Harbour in Antigua was home to England's most important naval stronghold. It was here that Admiral Horatio Nelson and his warships took safe harbour during hurricane season and received necessary repairs. In 2016, Nelson's Duckyard was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so I had to go back and visit my friend Dr. Murphy to explore more about this one-of-a-kind location. Okay. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. I see it hasn't gotten any easier. <laughs> Dr. Murphy, what a pleasure to see you again. Welcome back. What a remarkable setting, though. You have to admit it. Huh? It's, it's a dream location in many, many, many ways. You know, that's just for a military base. But still, it's a fantastically beautiful landscape. It certainly was not like this in its day. This was an industrial compound. What is right on top there? That house was built for the commissioner of the Royal Naval Dockyard. It's what we call Clarence House. And he could direct from up there what's happening. So, Doctor, I would assume that the British knew the importance of Antigua, of its strategic location. Yes, and they took a good advantage of that because they not only did they produce the products that was needed in England, but also this base provided a strategic location to keep a fleet of frigates that could patrol up and down the islands. Old sailing ships, when you're sailing around, you're going to hit reefs, you're going to get raided by privateers and pirates. You need to repair your ships and you need some place to hide in a hurricane season. The harbour doesn't get too much damage then? No, this is the safest place in the Caribbean. There are five bays that connect into one another yeah. through one little narrow entrance, which is easy to fortify. This little entrance was the only entrance? That's the only way in and out of this harbour. It's upwind, which is a bit difficult for the ships to get out of, but even more difficult coming in, because when you think about it, look at the distance. You have to come in and you have to stop your boat before you run into the beach or collide with another boat. So it took a lot of manhandling. You had to be an experienced uh, sailor. Yeah, huh? coming in here is not for novices in a big square rigged ship with no engine. You had a complete workforce dedicated to nothing but manning this naval dockyard. And to me, as a chef, I was intrigued about understanding they became the main commissary. Everybody bought from here. They salted meat, their breads, everything else like that. You had a hospital, you had your naval base, you had all of your lumber you, to repair ships, the copper for the bottoms of the ships. On average, you'd have close to 3,000 mouths to feed every other day. So the galley was working full time. They were baking bread and ship biscuits and all the products they needed, the sort of the hard tack that they took with them to sea. They were baking that here since as early as the 1720s. The bakery here is still being used today in that capacity, except they don't make the hard tack biscuits anymore. Nobody would eat it. Not even a dog would eat those hard tacks. <laughs> I don't know how they, how they fit them. I guess if you have nothing else to eat, that's... You have no choice. So there's a lot of tribute given to uh, Admiral Nelson. Yeah, Nelson was here to enforce the Navigation Act. British ships carried British goods. That was the policy. And once America became the enemy, that trade had to stop. 
When you look at it, the planters here were directly related to the planters in the United States and they traded with each other. The planters weren't allowed to trade with their relatives anymore, so it created a lot of conflict. A lot of the planters went bankrupt. The uh, American Revolution had a lot of impact on many other places in the world that most people don't think about. Yeah, yeah it, it, the spin-offs like, were enormous. Yeah. Can you imagine world without sugar? I can't. It's addictive. And once you turn the whole of Europe on, you turn the whole world on to sugar, you had to have it plus at any cost. Plus we started a new industry which is called dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> when did the Navy actually leave here, do we know? 1895. That long? Just yeah. that? But by then, the whole place sort of fell into disuse. These buildings are trapped in time. Because this place was abandoned so quickly as a naval base, they never had a chance to upgrade it to the bigger classes of warships because they couldn't come into this little harbor. The entrance restricted the size of the, the Exactly, ships. because when yeah. steam came in, the ships got bigger and more yeah. ironclad, and they didn't need to be careened. So it became a coaling station for small, you know, in-transit vessels, but it's lost its status as a military base. But we still work on boats right in this harbor, just as we did as early as the late 1600s. <laughs> Jeff Walters, welcome to Caribbean Tears on the southern coast of Antigua, close to the historic Nelson's Dockyard. You have to produce your food with love, not just for the benefit of profit. Do me a favor, give me a high five on that, <laughs> because that's what I'm telling everybody. If there's no love, you're in the wrong business. That's right. Fantastic. Yes, yes you're going to enjoy it. I know. This is what we call the chopper. You gotta have this when you serve in this dish. I'm gonna put some cod with tomato sauce right on the side here. I'm gonna put some veg in there. And so this is ducano with saltfish. This is another of Antiguan's national dish. So, first thing? That is the ducano. It's a sort of a semi-sweet dumpling. Ducano is made from a sweet potato, coconut milk, some spices and some flour. It's steamed in leaves. Banana? Banana leaf, yes. Mmm. Tasty, isn't it? Very. Yes. Cinnamon in there? Cinnamon in there, that's right. Mm-hmm. It has a really beautiful aftertaste as well. You could almost eat it for dessert. <laughs> And then secondly, we go to the chapel, which is made from okra, spinach. Boil it all together, yes. And you know what's going in there too as well? Green papaya. You go in there and you boil it and you chop it up nicely. Then you put a little butter and some salt and pepper. Mm. Uh, that's it. The chop up really blends extremely well with the dukana. Yes. It's kind of like the flavor. The saltfish we have here, it used to be salted saltfish. You soak it in water first. You and soak then... it in water and then you have to boil it. Yeah. You do all of that to extract the, the salt. The excess sodium. Then you deep bone it and then you cut it into small yeah. pieces. Every step of this plate is a new sensation. Yes, course. right. Every dish there complements each other. Absolutely. Yeah. That is Antiguan's national breakfast. If you have a breakfast like this, you don't have to go to church either. Well, I suggest you eat it after you come from church. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, yes. so good yes. to have you on the set. Uh, thank you. I see you got some uh, beautiful langoustine here, or do you call them lobster? Yes, Pine lobsters? yes, some local lobster. I look at the pineapple, I cannot uh, control myself. <laughs> And the last time I was in Antigua, we went up to the farm where they grow the unbelievable golden black pineapple. Yes, they have yes. more residual sugar, more color. So I can imagine this in a rundown, it's got to be spectacular. Take me through it. Firstly, I'm going to uh, prepare the, the lobster. Twist it. Taking the tail. Taking the tail, yes. He doesn't want to cut all the way through like so many do, so he gets a beautiful slice of the, the tail. What we call in culinary terms a medallion. A medallion, yes. That's just what you're doing right now. There you go. Perfect. Last piece right there. This one. This two. Three cuts, so that's four pieces. Four pieces, gotcha. Yeah. Next I'm gonna season them with some salt and pepper. Let them sit aside. Then I'm gonna do the mise en place and prepare the sauce. I'm gonna start cutting up some onion. It's too much, just a little piece. As you know, they say seasoned pepper, so yep. it's not hot. No, it's, not, it's not a scotch bonnet, I know. It looks like it, but it's not. Nice ripe tomato. And the celery? Contrast color, especially. Gotcha. So. 
It's important to have a hot pan to spread it all down to get the flavors right out. Definitely, definitely. I'm gonna add a little bit of pimento seed. Smells good already, huh? Look at yeah. that. I'm not gonna have, um, add the coconut milk. Okay, I'm gonna save the lobster. The beauty of cooking lobster, it goes so quick, obviously. Adding the, the lobster to the rundown, then I'm gonna let it reduce. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the pineapple. Small pieces? Small pineapple. pieces, just to add a little pineapple flavor to it. Andre, you, you realize yes. that this pineapple is revered all over the world because of the sweetness? It's not the best, it's not the best I have tasted. The rundown is, is bubbling now, so mm -hmm. I think it's about time. I have some sweet potato, some turned sweet potato, and some diced carrot. For the color, and it's looking good now. It's having a nice, having a nice bubble to it. So it's a very delicate sauce, it's beautiful. Very, though. very It delicate. doesn't overpower the lobster at all. All right. Beautiful. All right, Andre, let me try your handiwork. Wow. The pineapple and the coconut just wants to be together. It's beautiful. Thank you, chef. Thank you. Chef, I am honored to welcome you at Papa Zook tonight. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm very happy that I can welcome a countryman of mine, a former countryman, because <laughs> I, I used to be German and you are German, or used to be German either or. Used to be. But welcome at Papa Zook. So thanks for having me here in your restaurant. Not a restaurant, not a restaurant. This is a rum bar. So if you come in and you have some no shoes on, it's fine with me. If you want to eat your food with your hands, fine with me. Everybody comes to Papa Sook. Prime Ministers come here, the film people come here, the local gangsters come here, and we all <laughs> sit together on one table. Well, and when, some when, great friendships have happened but when already. When I walked in and I was walking on pebbles, I knew I was in the right place. <laughs> you like pebbles? <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> Try that barefoot, let's see if you still like it. <laughs> Get a massage. <laughs> you are very well renowned in Antigua the way that you prepare your food, where you use the ingredients. So you have the creole in your heart and the creole in your food. I'm just a little rum shop. Oh, yes. And we, and we serve some food and coincidentally <laughs> the food is quite good. You know, most of the time my, my clients ask for my snapper. And it's nice and crunchy the outside and fluffy and white the inside, well seasoned. And you dig in with your hands actually, mm -hmm. hands and, and, and fork. What time, what time do you actually close? Whenever. <laughs> My kind of guy. Whenever. <laughs> My kind of guy. That's the way it's supposed to be. I have one rum nobody really has. It's a rum which was made from rums. You see this? I see. This is called the fire rum. One Sunday afternoon some, some crazy man decided to burn me down. The entire place was gone. Some of the rums survived it. What I decided to do was to, to collect them in a big casket. All the ones which survived. Everything went in there. What came out is a very unique rum concoction, if you want so, made from the world. Nobody can duplicate? No. Impossible. It's one of a kind. It's one of a kind. The entire world is in there. I taste a little bit of uh, Flo de Cana because I'm partial to Nicaragua. In there too. <laughs> I think you should uh, burn it down and package it. Burn it down <laughs> again, right? <laughs> Carrot cake is actually a traditional dessert in the island. Isn't it? Traditional dessert in the island. Yeah, you should try it. I, I'm trying it right now, but I'm not, I'm not putting it down. <laughs> hmm. I'm glad you had the idea of bringing me some ice cream too. My pleasure, chef. I don't want to be too cleaning. <laughs> you guys. Oh, thank you, man. Andre. Thank you. Arlene. Thank you. You guys are the best. Guys, fantastic job. And I'll be back all this for a taste of history from Antigua.